going on with the mutations. You can have, as I mentioned, the aneuploidy, that you can have one or more chromosomes that are added or they are missing to the set of chromosomes that you're expecting to find. And you can also have, uh, under the aneuploidy, you can have different forms that are uh, easily recognized, they're most common. You can have a monosomy in which you are lacking a particular chromosome. So in the case, you remember, in the case of the sex chromosomes, uh, you have a monosomy when you are missing, for example, an X chromosome. Uh, you're female with XO, the O is not a chromosome, so it's only one X and nothing else there. So that is a monosomy. And in case of, uh, of Down syndrome, that you can have a trisomy. Also in the Superman case, that you have X, Y, Y, you have two of the Y. Or also with the Klinefelter syndrome, you can have two X's and one Y for the sex chromosomes. So that's a trisomy, three types of the same chromosome, of the same type of chromosome. Or also, you know, it goes with the number. You have a tetrasomy, there will be four chromosomes of the same type. Pentasomy, five chromosomes of the same type. And also remember that the phenotypes of having extra chromosomes, I would say in general, the most common phenotype is developmental disorder or mental mm -hmm. retardation. Mm -hmm. so right. I mean, the more chromosomes you have on that same type, the more severe is going to be the phenotype of the anomaly. And also, uh, when you talk, okay, that was the aneuploidy. So when you're talking about polyploidy, there will be the extra sets of chromosomes. So now, what a normal case would be for humans is a diploidy, which is a 2N, two sets of 23 chromosomes. But then if you have like triploidy, you would have one extra set. So instead of being 2N, it would be 3N. Then if instead of having three sets, if you have four sets, it can be tetraploidy. So if you look at the word polyploidy, okay, something with ploidy has to do with the sets. And if you say something as monosomy or trisomy or something, omi, it has to do with one chromosome. One specific chromosome, they have more of that or less of that particular one. Now with the polyploidy, as I mentioned, is not a very common in the animal world, uh, some fish and maybe some amphibians will have that type of mutation, but it's very common with the plants. You can have a lot of gene manipulation for crops and plants by just combining different sets of, uh, of chromosomes. Now, when you have this type, let's say, of uh, different arrangements of chromosomes here, if you have autoploidy, that is telling you something like auto, that means of the same. So if you have something that it says is an autoploidal organism, it means that it inherits sets from the same organism. It will inherit more sets of chromosomes from the same species. Now, when you're talking about alloploidy, that means that you may have two different organisms that will get together and you have different sets that originated from different sources. Uh, this is just a matter of, uh, of nomenclature, and uh, I, I don't expect you really to memorize all these nitty-gritty details on the nomenclature. I will just ask you to focus on the main ideas of the mutations, unless you're going into crops, genetic engineering. Now, how can you get autotetraploid, or four of the same types of chromosomes here, four sets? Well, that can happen, for example, when you are having a cell in mitosis, the cell is dividing, then what happens? All the chromosomes divide. So if the cell division is stopped short before you have the whole division and the, the separation of the chromosomes and the cytokinesis, if you just stop the cell division right after the prophase stage of cell division, then you end up here with a cell that has double the amount of chromosomes than you're supposed to have. In this case, if you have a diploid cell and you are going to replicate the chromosomes, in here at this stage in late prophase, you have 4N or the replicated chromosomes. And then if you stop the cell division right there, 
you end up with a cell that has double the amount of chromosomes that is intended to have. Now, if that happens in the early embryonic development, sometimes the offspring is viable, as in the case of some of the amphibians uh, and uh, you know, fish that I had mentioned. But so, most of the time, even if the offspring is viable, it's going to be a sterile offspring. It's not going to be able to have babies because there's just... Now, remember that if this is happening during early embryonic development, all of the cells of that particular organism are going to have this type of problem. All the cells are going to be, instead of 2N, they're going to be 4N because once you have the first cell division that got messed up and then the cell was viable, the cell is going to think that that stage is the normal state of the cell. So instead of thinking that it's supposed to be 2N, it's going to think that it has to be 4N. So all of the cells of the embryo are going to develop as 4N instead of 2N. By the time, you know, if the embryo is viable, you get uh, uh, offspring that is just uh, not very normal. And then, as I mentioned, this is not very common with animals but it can be manipulated in case of crops. And one example of this type of manipulation is like seedless uh, watermelons. An example of the auto tetraploid or the auto polyploidy. Now, if you want to see an example of allopolyploidy, correction of statement. Yes, here I want to correct one thing that I said in class that was not quite correct um, about the Autopolyploidy, it has to do with extra sets of chromosomes from the same species. But for the allopolyploidy, the most important thing is that it's from different species. An example of allopolyploid is when you get a mule, when you mate a donkey and a horse, you get a mule, which is a sterile animal, it cannot have babies. So if you want to read more about it, uh, you can also go to this site that I'm putting the link here and you can read a lot more about species that are closely related and when the chromosomes accidentally fuse, when the egg and the sperm accidentally fuse, you have this uh, animal that is viable but it is a mixture of two different species. That would be not that one cell got short on the mitotic state, that not that one cell got messed up, but it'd be that one cell got gametes, extra gametes from a different source, from another individual, from the father. So now you have this polyploidy that is not from the same cell, it's from two different sources. So that's the case of, uh, of the allopolyploidy. So here are just some examples of economically important genetic manipulations that use this type of principle to produce a certain type of crop that is so anybody interested in this type of field programming crops no by the way you can imagine that if you're going to eat the crops do you think they're harmful to you your health anybody think it's harmful no based on genetic principles, you're just going to digest all that. So who cares if the DNA is a little bit bigger or smaller? I mean, once it gets digested, it's, you know, gone. So getting a watermelon that is without seeds is not harmful. No, actually it can be the opposite. You can have a more nutritious crop because you can add a certain type of properties to the production of the crop, to the you know, gene expression of certain crop. So it can go either way, it depends on how you genetically engineer it. It does bother me a little bit when I see these people on TV saying, talking about Frankenstein foods. I, I, I'm pretty sure they never took a genetics course before. So here an example of a trisomy that, as I said, the most noticeable one is uh, trisomy 21, in which you have three of the same types of chromosomes uh, that are present in a cell. Now, most 
trisomies in animals are not viable, depending on what chromosome you are talking about. You're going to see examples of that. Now, if you look here at the case of Down syndrome of trisomy 21, if you look here at the size of that chromosome. Now, the way that you arrange chromosomes in a karyotype, how is it that you do that? You look under microscope, or you take a picture, you cut them out and put them on the line, and you're pairing them up based on size. So the first person who did this decided to pair it up based on the bigger ones come first. So the biggest chromosome is chromosome number one. And then it goes down the line. This get a little bit smaller is number two, a little bit smaller is number three. And then they keep on getting smaller, smaller, smaller until chromosome number 22. Because when you get to the 23 pair, those are the sex chromosomes. So you see they are bigger than chromosome number 22. Now, if you look at the trisomy 21, is that the chromosome that is relatively small. So the offspring of trisomy 21 is usually a viable offspring. The child survives, uh, but you still survives with some types of developmental problems. There are several uh, levels of gene expression that can be altered due to that trisomy. And not, you have actually several levels of mental impairment that you, you see one person is basically uh, a productive member of a society while another person is, is not able to reason or to, to think. And they do have several, a huge degree of variation on this syndrome. Now, if you're talking about other chromosomes that are bigger than 21, than the chromosome 21, then usually you do not have viable offsprings. Usually trisomy of the bigger chromosomes are embryonically lethal. As I mentioned here with the Down syndrome, you can also have problems that are developmental problems of malformation, lung malformation, heart malformation, and skeletal development malformation. One chromosome here is involved in a lot of developmental processes. Now, how is it that you can get trisomy 21? And why is it becoming more and more common? Basically, the trisomy 21 is correlated to the age of the mother for some unknown reason. The older the mother is, the more chances of having trisomy 21 that, and the child that, that she will have. And you see here a little chart correlating the rates of trisomy 21 to the age of the mother. When you get to about 35 years old, you have about 4%, sorry, the letter is so, the number is so small here. When you're about 35 years old, you have about 4% chance of having a child with trisomy 21. And then when you got to about 40 years old, look at the chances here, how the sky is high here, it jumps up to 12%. Mm -hmm. When you go to 45 years old, the chances are close to 18%. Or 20 percent so it is really correlated to the age of the mother other syndromes that can cause be caused by trisomy Patel syndrome or trisomy 13 now look at the number here chromosome number 13 is a lot bigger than chromosome 21 sometimes it passes most of the time is little but when it happens that you get trisomy 13 you get develop this Patel syndrome Patel syndrome kids are, are severely de developmentally retarded, basically. They have developmental problems in almost all of the org systems. And if they are born alive, they will die very, very young. They usually do not survive. Only a few months and the child dies. Uh, now, look at this. Older the mom and dead. Now, here you have to have both of the parents at, at an older age and to increase the chances of having a baby with the, with the Patel syndrome. And then the same would happen for Edward syndrome, but then this chromosome is a little bit smaller than chromosome 13. This is chromosome 18. And the symptoms are the same. The phenotypes are the same. And I put here a little video to show you a child with Patel syndrome. There you go, syndrome with the Patel. It's in Portuguese. They did not have a good one in English. <laughs> But the images are more important here. So here you show 
trisomy 13 right there that is a child that not most of the children do not survive with this type of syndrome I am sorry for the graphic images but it's a very severe syndrome and you know they're very very severe phenotypes